Alright guys, so welcome back. Um, I don't think I've done this on my YouTube at all, but on my Facebook, I'm really trying to put everything on YouTube, so bear with me. Um, and again, my videoing sucks. Today, we are doing, I'm going, I've switched my table around. I keep this on the back side. This is my small machine that I bought because my other machine, my um, my baby luck only does the, the straight stitch um, in line, but I, that's my, that's my baby over there. I like my baby luck and I wish to God that I had gotten instead of this one. I wish I just would have took this money and bought the other baby lock. Um, this one is a fantastic machine. If you're a new sewer, this would be like, ooh, creme bola or whatever it is. Like, um, the finest dessert you've ever had. This would be an amazing machine. If you're a new sewer or if you're used to like a cheap singer or something like that, this would be like Bazinga. However, for me, I struggle with it. Uh, it's, it's slow to me, um, even on its highest setting. It has quirks to me. And, and again, that goes back to being computerized and something I'm not used to. So I do fidget a lot. But anyways, it's it's a great machine. It's only a month old, but it's just, it's for, you know, beginner and maybe more um, lower end intermediate people or people that just want to do a zigzag occasionally, which is me. So um, this is my bucket. Okay. So I made all of these with the Martelli um, hexagons, um, the hexes is what I call them. And... Um, I've got my thread preloaded and on my, my bobbin and my thread is done in this same green and it is, I don't know what it is. It's, um, I get it at Be Sewing in Muskogee. Um, it's, I don't know. It's what it is. It's silk, um, something hundred percent cotton. I don't know. Um, sorry, just not that cool. Um, and so I decided to go with the green because I just, I was going to do a contract, a contrasting color. However, um, I had to, uh, switch it up because I, I thought about it more and I was like, I don't really want to put like a purple or something like that or a white. I don't want the stitch to pop like that. I wanted to just kind of blend, but kind of pop. I also am not going to put these on a design board and try to figure it out. So I had them all laid out and I tried to put them in order before and I decided that I'm just going to wing it and I'm going to let things just happen. So I'm going to just start putting together things and we're just going to, we're just going to go with it. Okay. Because I'm actually going to be sending this in to Martelli. I was, this was going to be a gift. And, um, but as I started working on it, I didn't have enough to finish the blanket. So I'm going, but as I was working on it, I got a lot of feedback and people were like, what? So, um, a lot of people wanted to see this finished. Hold on, I've got to zip my daughter's dress. Family time, you know. Um, so a lot of people wanted to see what it would look like finished. So you got to hold this together for me up here. Yeah, there you go. And um, oh, there you go. You may not need a skirt with it, baby. It looks good in the back. Yeah, I don't have to make a skirt for it. Hallelujah. Okay, it looks good. So, um, anyway, so I made this with the three inch hexagon in, um, this is what this is made of. The green is made with the three inch. The print is made with two inch. This is a Moda fabric. It was called a uh, sweet, sweet violet. Um, yeah, or sweet, sweet, um, yes, sweet violet by Moda. I've had it for a long, long time. It's way been discontinued. Ooh, sorry guys. I haven't even, oh, my nails are grody. I am dog sitting and this dog demands so much attention and they are going in and out and I have been scratching dogs all morning. I'm going to have to send a disclaimer and be like, hey guys, I have a cat, eight kids, and three dogs currently with me this weekend. So um, yeah, everything is going to have pets on it and, but we're, we're not smokers or anything. So at least, you know. At least we won't have that smell. <laughs> Just have all the pet dander and Oklahoma weather and all of that good stuff on there. Anyways, let me just, I'm sorry, this is embarrassing, but I can't stand this. This is crazy. But this is from 
It's from scratching my dogs. I love my dogs and yeah, they go in and out and you know, so anyways, all right. I'm not dirty, I swear, but it's, it's pets. Anyways. Okay. Anyways, beyond the point. I'm sorry. Let's get down to the, the grid of this. So each of these have batting in them already. So they're basically quilts as you go. So they're ready to go. So I have about 50 of them. Um, I'm going to show you the stitch that I really like. Um, and I think it's called the buttonhole stitch. It's this one. Um, you could use a zigzag. However, um, I don't like the look of it. It leaves like a light through it. This uses a ton of thread. So I will probably stop this video at some point and then finish it and then come back and show you the end result because I figured out how to put two videos in one. Yay. I'm getting better. Sort of. I mean, you may not get any cool edits, but at least I'm learning how to piece videos so they won't be 20,000 years long. Maybe we'll see. So that's the one I'm going to choose and I can't remember what setting. So I've actually got, I don't have any scrap fabric over here because I'm on the other side of my table. So I do see some paper back here. We'll just use some paper, I think. Well, where is some scrap? Here, you know what? I had these cut because I was going to add these to it and go ahead and make it into a blanket. But since I'm not going to do that, let's just, let's try it on this. I always like to do a test run. I've not tried this thread in this machine before. I don't know really what I'm doing, so... All right, um, you know, I just like to have fun. I don't, I don't want to make this into like, you know, a thing. So I'm going to choose, um, uh, six and I have in the B foot already cause I was going to use it whether they wanted me to or not. And so let's see what the stitch looks like on its own. I already know I'm not going to use it, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just play it out for you. See if I can. Boo, boo, boo. All right. Move this string out of the way. I don't know. So this is just what it's on. Okay. And let's just go ahead and cut it off so we can get a good look at it. All right. So this is what it's doing. Do you see what it just? Do you see what it just did to that fabric? How it like pulled it in like that? I mean, it actually might work pretty good for what we're going to be doing it for. Oh, my nails look terrible. Oh, okay. Don't look at my nails. Ugh. Anyways, um, it's pretty tight on this one, but I think it's just because that's the thread and that that's because it's only a single layer. I'm going to put some paper behind this because I need to know for sure. Well, baby. Why do you say that? What what are you what do you want me what are you trying to ask me to do? What are you wanting? Say what you want. Don't say yesterday. Say what you want. Try. No 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 no. Say can I? Can I? And then say it. Yes, I don't care. You might have to go out the other door though because I'm doing this one. What? You don't have to say yesterday like it was okay before because you might get in trouble. All you have to do is say, can I? All right. All right. <sighs> what, baby? No, I like it. You look cute. Oh, where are the longer, where are the longer pearls? It's a little bit short. It is, but it's a costume, so, and you can't see anything. Wear, go ahead go ahead and wear the longer pearls. Try it with the longer pearls, though, because you tie them in a knot in the front, and it might look cuter with that. Okay, so it's really tight. Oh, gosh, I keep doing that. It's really tight through here. I'm trying to make a Halloween costume, even though nobody wants to do my friend and take me out. Okay, so we're, I'm going to stick with this, then. Cause it's, so this is what it's already set on. I know with, like, my applique, I always end up having to really scooch it together. But um, I feel like... I feel like if I leave it on that, that's going to give me, I mean, shoot. I feel like that's going to have to be, that's going to have to be the way of it. We may even, let's do, I'm going to go ahead and stretch it out to its widest length. I'm sorry. I know that there's, it's a lot going on back here, but you know, that's just the way of life. Okay. So that's a little bit, that's even wider. 
and it didn't even stay on the fabric. It came right back out, but I can see the pins on it that it made on there. Okay, we're gonna go the widest method. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this thread out some. It's struggling a little bit. I've got my thread, it's really thick thread, and um, this machine is just not, not the baby lock. It's not the baby lock. I want to get, and I should have got it. I should have. While I had the money, I should have done it. I should have just pulled the trigger and just did her. But I didn't. So it's my fault. Um, I wanted to get the Jazz 2 and the Accomplish. Because I knew I wanted to get the Accomplish. My father passed a few years ago. And then his parents passed a few years ago. And then, um, so I just got a little tiny bit of money. And so I was able to purchase these machines. Um, but I, I have not done that. Um, I was working on a little um, Singer um, Quantum Stylus. And it crapped out on me during COVID. And then um, I was able to purchase... Um, Baby, you can't come in this door. You can't. I don't want me to take a nap. Ollie, he's trying to lay down. But listen, if people are out there playing on it, then you can't do it. If you need to take a nap, you're going to go in your own bed. You can take your tablet upstairs if you want. Use the other door, please. Oh, jeez. I'm sorry, guys. Anyways, and then I bought during COVID. My, well, my husband bought it for me for my birthday. And I actually think I'm going to have to widen the stitch link now that I've got all this in here. So, um, yeah. um, my husband bought me a new home. Do you know me? Oh, that's really cute. I like that one a lot. And, um, it, it longens it. You know what I mean? It like lengthens the dress, like yeah, with it being the longer really pearls. So anyways, I got a new home, an NH22 that a local dealer um, had on hand during COVID mess. And so I was, that's fine. I don't want any more. Um, and I love that machine. It was great. Oh yeah, I think I'm going to like that. It just gives it something else. But you can see right there where it's going to kind of do some weird stuff, but nobody's going to notice that. That's okay with me. And there's going to be about 7 billion threads. So I'm not, I'm not going to fuss about threads right now. Um, I don't know. Maybe I should cut them as I go. But you guys, um, if you're not familiar with me or follow me anywhere else, you can find me on Facebook at Mama Makes It All. Um, I do stuff there all the time. And and I'm always on the Martelli Quilters group site. I love them there. Um, the ladies there are just they're so daggum nice and, and they just will, if you're struggling with stuff, I have posted things there and I've just been like, listen, I don't know what the crap I'm doing. Somebody needs to help me here because I suck at life and they will stop what they're doing and they will help you. And so I really love those guys there. And, um, so anyways, I, I love them there and, um, they're just great. And so I get distracted easily. I'm always doing about 15 projects at once. I always have project boards running. I don't run a business. I don't make money. I'm just a mom. I stay at home. I need to sell things. If you want me to make you something, I'll be happy to do that. Okay, do you see what this machine has done? Do you see that? That would not happen on my baby lock. I'm just saying, it wouldn't. And that's, that's the truth. Um, that's the difference in a, a quality machine and not, I'm just saying the amount of money that I spent on singers, low end singers and, um, finding my way up my Janome new home, there was nothing wrong with it. I gave it to someone to, um, to sell, to help with, um, a project that she's doing, um, as a, as a help, you know, uh, but there was nothing wrong with it. And I kind of wish I'd kept it at this point. Cause I'd be like, here, take this one. I'd rather have my old new home back at this point. Um, because this thing, I really, this is not, this is really for 
somebody else and not me. So I don't really know. I should sell this thing or something because this would be a great machine for somebody else. Just not for me. And I think it's because it just really wants to go slow and I don't, or maybe it's just that type of machine. Maybe I should have just did more research on it, but I don't appreciate the skip stitches. I don't appreciate the jerkiness on it. And um, when I tell it to do something, I want it to do it. I don't want any questions asked. And it, it, it kind of, but that's also not like a new sewing person type mentality. Most new sewers are like, okay, machine, I'm at your mercy. Please be nice to me. And I may be squishing them too close together. So let's try loosening them up. Maybe I am demanding too much of the machine. So, and then I, I think, um, I'm going to slow it way down so I don't keep hitting the pedal so hard. I'm just so used to my other machine. So maybe I'm just going to go really slow and maybe it's just the thread is so thick that it's just really hating life. Possibly. I know that whenever I do my applique, it does fine, but it's using really thin, um, high-end threads. Um, I mean, this is a nice thread too. This is a very nice thread, but it's very thick, 100% cotton, and it's in the bobbin, and it's in the feeder. So, might be, you know, part of it. It might just be something this machine is not for is going to take me longer than it took me to make all five billion of these things. All right, let's see if it skipped any this time or did anything wonky. It didn't. So maybe it just needs more time. So do you see what I'm saying? Like it'll do it, but it just needs more, it needs more time and it needs more just stuff that I don't have. I don't have time for anything. I don't have time for anything ever. So I'm, I'm always running like a chicken with my head cut off. So I'm just trying to sort through these little things and I just try to grab one that doesn't look like the last one. That's all I'm doing. Sorry. And I don't even know how long I'm going to go with these. I know it makes a really big um, cause it would go right across the top of like a twin size bed. So I don't want to go that big with it. I'm going to send this out to them in a smaller version just for them to get a good, you know, see of it. And then I'm probably going to send the rest of it in a round piece for my aunt that I was going to make the blanket for in the first place. And then I'm going to make her something different. So and I think I just saw it skip a stitch. Which is crazy because I'm still going. I'm going this really slow speed. That's got. Maybe I'm trying to make them be too close together. I've never done this before on this small of a hexagon. I put together my big hexes with the same stitch with no problem, but I used a different thread. So maybe it really has to do with this being 100% cotton and it absolutely did skip up there. Maybe it's too much in the center and it's struggling. I can see it's struggling. It just doesn't have the power. It's just really hard to go to this machine from the other one. Makes me sad. So I've got to go back up here and fix this mess. It's really aggravating. Um, and I'm going to tell you right now, this machine was $700. And for $700, I could have got a Jazz, too. Uh, gosh, I see my daughter's dog way out there. And the boy is crazy. No screaming unless you're really dying. Copper! Copper! Uh, Chloe? Oh, gosh. Copper! Copper! Here he comes. 
He's already got a hurt leg out there trying to chase stuff and rolling in dead stuff all the way down the hill. Copper, get in this house. Come on, you bad dog. Come on. You know you shouldn't go that far out. The other dogs aren't that far out. You get your butt in here. You don't go that far down the hill. Yeah, I'm getting really upset with this machine. I should have sprung for the baby lock. I want to do a long, a long version of this for sure because I feel like it, it just needs to be longer so you can see how it would be longer. I'm going to try to space these out. Like if I were using um, the... What you doodle? The I feel like it's not even walking it or anything. Maybe I should space it out more so it doesn't have as much struggles. Y'all are not going outside because you can't follow direction. Go lay down somewhere. Go on. Go lay down. Trying to go roll in dead animals and stuff. No. Go lay down. No, you can cry all you want to, but it's not going to happen. No. We're not all going to start worse than kids. All right. So this is no longer a circle. So we'll just start building on it from here. And I am going to go ahead and, and lengthen this. Uh, just because I'm worried about the machine. I don't, I don't, because I would prefer it be this tight, but this machine is just... I guess I could have just did the zigzag, but I, it just doesn't, it's not as, it's not as healthy. It doesn't hold up as well. So I'm going to put, let's see, I want this one to go over here. So we're just going to, normally I would do a line and then do another line and then attach each line, but I'm not going to do that because I want to be able to see where and how these are going to go in. I'm just making sure that I'm always leaving that quarter of an inch so that I can move it if I need to and make sure that it's adjusted properly. And I did lengthen the stitch, so just hoping it acts right. Oh my gosh, these dogs are killing me. Oh, Gibby's still outside. Is that why y'all are crying? Because the other one's outside? Trying to go nice and slow for it, and it's killing me. I want this to be in line. See, it's not wanting to get in there. It hates it. right. <sighs> Copper, you better behave. My daughter's out of town for a baby shower and so I'm watching my grand puppy and he is a hot mess spoiled. I 
giant big old baby crybaby lab and just rotten to the core. And so, like I said, I mean, this is just how I'm going to do it, but you definitely could do the same way that I did with this row. You do a row and then you do the next row and the next row, and then you can go zigzag, zigzag all the way down with this whole line, which is how I did my blanket. <clears throat> my big blanket, I did whole strips. Let me zoom back out on my big blanket. I did the big hexes. And I did the whole line, and then I did a whole line, and then I pieced the whole line together. But because I don't have this planned out, I think I'm just gonna keep doing it like this and putting each one together by these little strips. And it'll, I think it'll keep it stronger too, with it being so. If the thread does pop, it's only gonna pop um, in these little quadrants, so that way the whole blanket won't fall apart and it can be fixed. If that makes sense, or table runner or whatever it is. So at this point, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna keep working on this and then I'm gonna come back when it's finished or close to finished and show you. So be back. Okay, so I finished this up and I gotta tell you, I am a super fan of this multicolor thread on this. And I'm also super grateful that I did not make this into a quilt because I would have been here forever doing it. Um, however, this actually doing it this way with this much thread here, um, I don't know, it makes it look like this is fabric, that's fabric, and then that's fabric. Like I did some kind of weird block thing, but it's it's not. It's thread. You watched me do it. So, um, so here it is. I'm going to try to zoom or do some things here. Okay. So let's, let's see. So... You can kind of see it a little bit. I'll put it over here on my cover. It's just really, really, really pretty. I don't, I don't know what else to say about it. It's really pretty. And on one side, I did go like I would stitch and come out, stitch and come out. And then on the other side, I did all the side stitches. And then I put it together and I went zip, 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 zip. Um, it's just, it's really gorgeous. It, I cannot tell you how pretty this is And that. I really kind of want to applique some leaves on this. I have some Martelli leaves and I kind of want to cut them out and put them on here because I just feel like that's kind of vine looking and how cool would it be to just put like, uh, let me, let me just grab some. Okay. Cause I have some just up here randomly hanging from my little halo thing which is also martelli because you know i have an obsession so it's a thing so these would always be smaller whenever you cut them out but i kind of was like it's like i wonder if like on some of these solid ones if i cut out like a print and put there and then like maybe put like over here or something i might do that i don't know i'll get back to you I'm thinking about it still. But in the meantime, let's go back to the machine. Whoop, boo, boo. Okay. Because I want to show you what I'm doing. Because I decided to go ahead and do something different. Because, you know, I have a lot of these. I have like, I don't know, 42, 50, however many comes in a charm pack. Because that's all I did was buy a charm pack and use a little bit of yardage. Um, so... With this one, I'm doing a zigzag. Uh, this is my settings. It's just a regular people zigzag. And the way that I'm doing it is I just, I started in the mid, I started right here. And then I came and I went down. My thread keeps breaking, even though I've changed the tension, I've done all kinds of stuff, but so then I came back up here and I started up here and I came back in and I went out and then I started here and I've gone out. And so now, cause I'm just going to make like a big hexy for like a round table or a hot pad or something, which this should not be used as a hot pad because this one is actually, um, did I finish this one off? Oh gosh, I got up before I even realized it. I don't think I did. I'm going to have to figure that out. Okay. So, um, I did not use Bozel in this, so I used 
just uh, whatever scrap batting I had. And that's what I used in this project. So this would not be safe for heat stuff right now. However, if you wanted to do that, you definitely could put some bosal in here or some, you know, heat stuff and do it that way. So this is my center hexi. So I'm just attaching everything to it. So I just decided that this was my center and then I just started going around it. So I got, I went, you know, burp, burp. So now I'm going to go right back up here and I'm going to set my needle down and I'm, I'm doing a much thinner um, spance because I wanted to see just some different ones with this. I just really wanted to see what else, what else I could do with it, kind of. And I do kind of pull on it a little bit just to kind of keep it in place. Just for like in line, but I, it's not really super necessary because they're pretty. The only reason why they wouldn't be exact is because I didn't stitch properly because they're cut precise. Um, then it's just my stitching at that point. And of course I have to go so slow with this machine. It's aggravating. I could probably do 400 more things a day if I had better equipment, but I can't really complain about this because I just got it. God forbid my husband will murder me. So. Okay. So then I just get to the edge. I don't know. Hopefully you can see that. Um, I just get to the edge of it where I think that I might start my zigzag and I just stop there. And then I just add my next, what is my next one anyways? I don't even know. Um, looks like this one. I tried to pre-plan, but it looks like I need to add another one to it. So then I'm going to swivel where this is going to be the straight line. Then I'm going to squish this in here to where this line is what I'm lining up. I'm not worried about anything else right now. I'm just going to try to stick it up in there. And smush it together and then I'm gonna just keep going hopefully this machine I think it just skipped <sighs> anyways it's so aggravated with it I wonder if I could call the manufacturer and just be like I'm really unhappy I wonder if they would let me get something different or I don't know is that a thing? Do people, do they let you do that? Do they let you say, hey, you really, really, really suck. Will you just take this back? It's just, it's only 30 days old and I already just really, really, really hate it. Okay. So... So then I'm going to go back to this point. Do you see where it kind of, it went over and kept going? So I'm going to come back here to grab in there again to make it look all streamlining and pretty. And then you see how this side is longer than that side. I know that I'm going to end up attaching this other wall to it, but I am going to try and push it up a little bit, but I'm not going to freak out about it. Okay. Cause it really will all just be okay promise. I just lost my thread. <laughs> it's been like this this whole time. This machine is just, I'm, I can't even, it, do, it doesn't matter if I put in billion dollar thread in it. It, it wouldn't matter. It is just, Yeah, babe. Hey, I think McDonald's is doing a a BOGO on like Happy Meals or something for a buy one get one for Halloween stuff. Um, look, I gotta look on the app because it might be a thing, but that might be actually. You know what? We'll just have corn dogs again because it's fifty cent corn dog day. Hey, when it's fifty cent corn dog day, can you get a what? A shake. From where? 50 cent corn dog, mom. Oh. 
Um, that's on your way home though. Wait, what time is it? It's not time for dinner yet, is it? You'll have to get it's back lunch. out. It's okay. We just had those corn dogs, so no. Let's just wait till later. I just don't want to be in the crowd too, because I don't want that many people close to me. What? Even in the car or oh, near okay. our food. No, I don't want to take the boys out at all because they had all of that candy yesterday and it sure set them off. Ben was up and down, up and down all night long. And Rex's mouth is killing him now. Do you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Be careful. Love you. Actually, gosh, you know what? Brahms sounds amazing. God, I'm being such a fat kid. It's just because I'm so tired. I do not want Sonic. I guess. And then go to Brahms and get me a hot fudge shake and make, see if Gabby wants something. She might want to go with you because she's being dramatic. I don't like well, fine, whatever. I don't care. I want to go alone. So I can jam out. You don't need to jam out. You need to focus on the road and pay attention to your life. I am. Be careful. Drive safe. Love you. Good riddance. I'm trying to find another color to go with this. Oh. Maybe. Let's put a brown in there, but I don't really want like a florally, florally one. Where's another brown? Is there another brown in here somewhere? Let's see. This is like my favorite print, but I don't want to put it right next to its own print. So, um, I'm sorry, guys. Give me just a second. Just one. Un momento. You know what? We need to do a solid. We, yeah, we need to do a solid so that way I can put... A little leaf or something or some kind of applique. I, I really like doing the applique. How about this? Yes. Here we go. Because we got a lot of other colors going on. <sighs> I want this time of year to be over because I'm I'm just stressed. I'm just totally just stressed. Even though we don't make a big production of Christmas, because, you know, we do, like, Jesus' birthday, and we do a cake for baby Jesus, and all of that stuff, it's still really hard on us, because even just feeding all of us just one huge dinner is usually, gosh, like, three, four hundred dollars, even just for your typical, you know, Thanksgiving and your typical Christmas, and it's just... Because now the kids are getting bigger and now they've got, you know, partners and husbands and um, even one of them is pregnant and it's just, gosh, we didn't think this through. <laughs> um, we're doing, we're, we're drawing names though this year. We did that last year and it worked out really well because we still got for like all the kids something. Uh, we never do a huge Christmas because I don't really... I don't know. I just don't do that. Do you see what this machine is doing? Do you see this? I hate it. I hate it. My God, you just scared the crap out of me. What are you doing, sister? Just, just kind of hanging out. I had, well, I delivered a barge order. Yeah. And it was in Wagner, so. I was like, okay. Sorry about that. Um, and my thread skipped all through here. So then I turned my machine off. I had to put it back. I don't even know if it's on the same settings anymore. Uh, my oldest daughter just showed up out of the blue come visit so I was visiting with her she's gonna she's run into town with my other daughter real fast so I'm gonna try to get this finished up so I can visit with my girls okay so I try to just go in the direction of Because all of this was skipped. Like, this machine is just garbage. I just hate it. Just skipped all so many stitches. And 
see, I think it's too wide. I think my stitch is too wide right now. I don't think I put it back in the same setting. Maybe I did. I don't know. Gosh, I should have looked. Anyways, I just need to get it finished up. And for this last one, I'm going to go ahead and go around and then come back down. So that way I can be done with this one. Because I've, I've got to make some food now. And... Because when your baby comes home, you cook for your baby, you know. Even though I have lots of babies, you know, still. way I think. Hold on. I just tried to, I want my needle to go. There we go. Back. Because so I just swing it to wherever. See now I'm on the wrong side. So I think I was looking at it like this way going backwards. That's okay. So what I'll do is I'll line it up. I'll take a few stitches backwards. Maybe a few stitches forward. And so I'm on that side, so would I be in the right spot? I don't know, I can't even think right now because we're just we're talking about something serious. And there we go. This side, one more back. Okay, now let's switch it around and go from there. And I still did it the wrong. What is wrong with me? What is happening here? Why can't I do anything right? What's going on? Jeez. Yeah, so what? I don't even care at this point. I um I just I, I have some other stuff going on in my head. This is not where I'm at right now, so kids first, stitches later. pull this over here and have a look see at it and I'm, I'm definitely a fan of the other stitching I'll tell you that right now even though this isn't even clipped yet or anything it's um it's just not as pretty I guess if you were trying to use like an invisible and you wanted to be able to see the green I just don't feel like it's as pretty um and like I said, maybe if I used different thread on different fabric, it would have been different. But I don't appreciate this zigzag near as much. I mean, I guess at a distance, it's cool. Maybe if it was a zigzag on a solid color, it would be cool. Maybe like a purple or just a solid green color. Because when it gets to the lightest color green here, you can't even see it there. So maybe that color would be good. Or even the dark color, just like all the way around. But by far, my favorite is this. Woo! But not every machine has that. So, and I understand that. So this is the zigzag on it. And so this is just a little round table situation. And you could always keep growing it as you wanted to, you know. But it just gives you a general idea. And I am going to go ahead and cut out. Um, I think I'm going to just do something like this. And um, we can do that together if you want to. We can do it. Um, give me just a minute to set up and move this board and all this crap out of the way. So give me a second. Okay, so this is some Reynolds. I, I have heat and bond. I have all of that stuff. But for the purposes of this, I just wanted to show you. Um, this is just freezer paper. Um, plastic coated. Okay. And I sometimes... If I'm going to freehand something or if I'm going to just draw some, I know I'm getting far away. Give me just two shakes. I can't even find a pencil. So anyways, this is cool. I got this <laughs> one of my, one of my purchases. Um, and I love it. So don't judge me. Okay. So, uh, anyways, I, um, 
I have, what did I do with my mat? Oh, I know what it is. Okay, so this is my like makeshift ironing board that I've actually got underneath me here. Is this thing, it's just got canvas on it. It's a piece of wood and some foam my husband made for me. But this is my wool, uh, my Martelli. This is my favorite mat. You'll see me use this about 20 billion times. Um, it's their 12 by 12 translucent um, cut and press. I don't even think you can see it right now. Anyways, that's my, that's, that's bomb.com, okay? So anyways, um, so on this freezer paper, I could just cut out the fabric with this and it would be fine. And actually, you know what? Let's, let's do this. Normally you could trace out whatever you wanted to here and then you could just put it on the fabric and the plastic coating transfers to the fabric. And then you just use a little bit of glue and you can applique cheaply like that. Um, and that's what I'm gonna be doing today. So this is the paper side. And for the sake of this video, I'm gonna use the same green that I used on my background hexes. And since this stuff is so light, I really want to, uh, I think I'm gonna use two layers and I might actually puff it just because life happens. I don't want to use my good wool. Um, this is why I have this old board up here. It's for whenever I'm doing things that I don't really know what I'm doing, but I want to figure it out. So that leaf right there is, is pretty small. It's This is small one I'm gonna use. So it's pretty small, so you can see. So I think I'm just gonna use a strip of this paper because I don't wanna get any of this on my iron or my little crappy board. I gotta let my dog in, jeez. Come on, then. Come on. Where's the other one? That's two. I don't know where the third one is. All right. So I'm going to just uh, do this. And I could pull back out my hexi and cut it perfectly, but I just need to get this done. Okay. I need to get this done and done. I'll cut that little rough spot off. And I'll tell you another secret too. If you find like a scarf somewhere or something or a different kind of fabric, you can use this to get like cool prints off of things. So I'm going to just put this down on my fabric. Okay. And I've got my iron is on and I'm just going to press this on. And I'm just going to hit it like that. And then I'm going to flip it over. I'm not using any steam. And this is just going to melt that plastic coating onto this fabric. Okay. Now. That will keep it good to go. And so this is the back now. When we peel that off, that's going to be the glue downside. So we're actually going to be drawing back here, cutting right here. So we're just gonna put this down and we're gonna cut. So we're gonna use this for the cutting mat so I don't have to use this big thing. So you could trace this out, but that's not what Martelli is about. This is what I'm talking about right here. This is why you hear me talk about Martelli, Martelli, Martelli. So I don't have to deal with all of this other junk. So I'm gonna try to get as many leaves out of this thing as I can. So look, let me just move this around a bit. Those little end things right there are always tricky. So you have to bear with me on that. They say on those end curves like that, you should just use a pin and then cut it. But you know, I like to live life dangerously. <laughs> Why not? Now, if you took heat and bond and you, um, not heat and bond, but um, inter uh, blah, 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 blah. yeah, heat and bond light, feather light, whatever it is, and you use this and you stitched it and then flipped it right side out, you would have a perfect edge. But we're not, we're not doing that today. Okay, so. And actually, I did say I wanted to puff one, didn't I? So, hi, babe. Did you go to sleep or no? I just fall asleep. 
for a little bit? Yeah. Okay. For a little bit. All right. Okay. You didn't. You didn't have to. I just was asking if you got rest. I hear a car running. A car running? No, I hear it from upstairs. Oh, well, Bailey's, well, Bailey's not here right now, but she's went with sister to the store. She'll be back. I think. Don't freak out and make it weird. I'm trying to see around this thing. I'm not doing a very good job. I'm trying to pay attention to the dogs outside and the kid behind me. All right, so um, I did say I wanted to puff one. So how about this? How about we, uh, yeah, let's, let's cut one more and we'll call that the puffer, which I didn't need to do that. So if I wanted to just glue, okay, let's put those off the side, put that off the side. So let's say we want to make a little puffy one. That's like an in thing right now, a little puffy, a little abstract art here. So we're going to take two pieces. What the? No, uh-uh. Mm -mm. You would cry. You can't do this kind of stuff with acrylics. My gosh, can you imagine? All right, so let me just go around this a little bit better because I sucked at it. Yeah, that's fine. I don't care. That's fine. All right, let me scooch all this away. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put these pieces aside because we're going to puff this okay i'm going to take these pieces and we're going to glue them down i'm going to put these aside so like this so let's put the glue down ones on this guy let's put them um, so what I'm going to do is find my glue, but wherever it is, I'm going to use just some Elmer's glue. I'm just living life like that, okay? Don't judge. And so I'm going to just maybe tilt this off of here. You know, if your kids do artwork or something, you can print it onto freezer paper and applique it to things. And that's really fun. And that's one way to get like big lettering and stuff too. If I ever get it apart. I may never get it apart. It may never happen. <laughs> All right. So now all that's left is like this paper. So now some of that plastic is left on here. And so now I'm gonna take some glue and I usually put mine in a little dish um, on the side and I um, use a little tiny brush or a little silicon brush and I just like rub it around, but I'm gonna wing it, okay? Just watch me just wing it here. This is some old school applique, so I'm just kind of like putting this down here. All right, so let's put him, put him right here over the seam. Right there. And then press. And that is going to just dry all of the glue instantly. 
and then all that we're going to do is go around that with a different probably um uh, not the same thread but a different um, design and then i i'm going to go ahead and put another one on there but i think i need to try to get this off differently here let me see I wonder if I should try to heat it up a little bit more. Maybe melt that plastic off of there a little bit better. Because it was not wanting to come off at all. Oh, I pulled a thread. Normally, I just get like a little piece of paper. Actually, I could set it right here. Put a little dab of glue. This is what I usually do because I'm that girl. And since I spend so much money on Martelli, I have to figure out ways to save money in other places. <laughs> right? Ooh, shaky wakeys. Okay. No seam checks for this mama. I mean, nothing against them, but it's on Elmer's floor, right? And heat and bond is more convenient, saves some time, but when you're just doing one or two little things like this or a very custom thing, might as well, right? Like, all right, let's, I think I want to put it like, I, could, I was going to put it there, but that's too close together. I think I want to go down here or something. So I think I'm going to go right here just to give it a little something. And then the threads that were hanging, that was right here, I'm going to kind of carefully put that back in there. And I have these little tweezers that are also Martelli. I know, I know they're Martelli, Martelli. Um, they're the little copper tweezers. They're actually, they're expensive, but, um, let me tell you, I have two pair. <laughs> um, and I got them, they do the, the auctions like every week or whatever, or the live sales. And these things, <laughs> I use them in my bathroom. My girls use them on their eyelashes. You could like, you could do some damage with these boogers. <laughs> I'm convinced you could do surgery with them. I swear. By the way, the iron that I use, because sometimes people ask me, this is a Panasonic um, 360. I have had this thing for about two to three years and I have not had any issues. I do have a new iron coming my way. It wasn't planned. Um, I was bidding on a sale on Mar Martelli, obviously. And I got as part of their sale, I got one of their new irons. It's a little travel iron. So we're going to do some needlework on that in just a second. And um, so it should be here sometime next week. So today is Halloween, um, in case you didn't know. <clears throat> and so next week my order should be here. My last week's order I really just thought was going to be here today. Because I usually always get it um, by the end of the next week. But I don't, I think maybe the storms that we've had um, in Oklahoma City really um, affected our postal service. Or maybe the storms, the hurricanes down that way. And just, you know, there's it's been some weather anomalies. Anomaly, anonym, um, anom oh, okay. I'm just going to not speak, so... So I had a few threads there. Um, and you can see right here, I'm going to show you this. This is what that machine just skips the crap out of stitches. Go ahead, babe. You can. I'm going to try to cover that up with this. So 
what we're going to do now is we're not actually gluing this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just run around this with a stitch and I'm going to leave a tiny little piece and we're going to stuff it with some stuff. I would go open up my fiber fill because I actually haven't used it yet. I got it at an auction at Martelli as well. And I actually haven't had the pleasure and you hear them talk about it like it is gold. Um, but I still had this huge big bag of um, polyfill because um, I used to buy it by the uh, just huge monstrous boxes and have it shipped to the house. Um, so I actually have not, uh, let me see here. I need to use a two, I think just a standard. I don't know. I think he's in bed. So I'm going to, um, probably change out my foot. This is one thing I do like about this machine is that it's right here. These little feet that all came with it are just right here in this little collective little hive and it has this little like, space and just all of this coolness so I, I do like that that's about the only thing I like I do like the way it threads the needle that's that's nice so all right since there's no right and wrong way to this we're just going to I'm going to do a very 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 small stitch over here uh and I'm gonna let's see Let's make it a super tight stitch too, um, I think. Can't really see on this thing. So I think I'm just gonna use some leftover batting from a project to just stuff in here. Cause you could have just sewn it all together and did it, but I don't know. I'm just trying to give you some ideas to like up your game. So you could do the hexagons, but I just, you know, I really like for everything to have some kind of little something extra that says, not only did I bust my tail feather on this thing, but I also went the extra mile and customized the crap out of it for you. Like <laughs> That's just me. And see, like my fabric is kind of down in here. So these boogers are just, I know it sounds terrible. I'm talking about a stinking tweezer, but um, I use them. I use them to get splinters out of kids' hands and um, in my bathroom for my eyebrows and <laughs> in my sewing room to make my life better. Um, and it just gets in everywhere and it's just so strong and great and I just love it. This is a pain in the rear end. I should have put a piece of paper down, and that is my fault. Word to the wise, um, use paper, okay? Because just using regular old paper would have just saved me a ton of headache. Do you see that? It just took it. It just took it. All right. Let me see if I can just... I always keep a little roll of cash register paper nearby. I actually use that to help me with um, my scraps as well too. To keep them, I, um, I sew them all to a long piece of paper and then I cut them apart and fold them out. And I did a video on my Facebook page. I did a live that was hours and hours and hours of sew along where I actually did that. So and I actually have a really awesome looking um, blocks that I actually need to do some work with. So, okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and move this over. And you can get this cash register paper. At, I got mine at Walmart for like $2.88 or something for two big old rolls. You can get other, pa you can buy specialized paper, but you know, again, to afford one or two other nice tools, you gotta skimp on a couple of other tools. So. So you're gonna see me leave like the world's tiniest little hole. And I'm kinda doing this on purpose, okay? Boy, that looks terrible down there. 
So you gotta remember, I've only been sewing like for a hot minute to sew. Don't try not to judge me too bad. So I'm not gonna stress about any of this because I'm gonna stuff it and then I'm gonna stitch it down. So it's okay. So let me be quick because I think they just pulled up. Dang, okay. Mm. So this is just some random stuff that I have over there from filling in like hexes and this blanket I just finished the other day. So I'm going to open this up just like the tiniest world's tiniest little hole here. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to take this, this, these tweezers, I'm telling you guys, y'all just don't know. You cannot be that sharp, that accurate. And that tiny, like with, and we're talking makeup tweezers too, because whew, girls putting your lashes on, right? Yeah, they're here. I just heard them. Crud. Okay. So I'm just going to slide these down in here. Just grab it. And just keep going because once you get it going it's gonna keep going if you had some um, plain old um, batting that you want to stuff in there and then stitch it together the only reason why I don't do that is because a lot of times the batting will hang out the side and whenever it does hang out the side like that it just really is yucky looking so you know just keep working from there okay so sorry about that um, I've got a lot of a lot of my kids are in and out today so I finished stuffing it and then what I did was I poured a little bit of glue onto my paper and I just kind of rolled the, the edges in glue. And now I was letting my iron heat back up because it heated it some but then stayed. Hi baby. Oh. I love you. Good morning. Well, happy nap time. Yeah. Okay. Um, did you sleep good? Ben's outside. Did you cry? Well, mom's gonna forget about her fabric. <laughs> Okay. Are you gonna go outside? I love you. Baby, you wanna help me? Do you wanna sew? You do? Well, let's sew then. We can do this. Let me set this down. <clears throat> I can get all the dogs to move. You can help Mama sew, okay? Hang on. Sissy's dog's in the way. Alright. Okay. So all we gotta do is we have to pick out a cute pattern. Let me move this down. Okay. So what kind of pattern do we want to do up here, buddy? We want to do something kind of cute, kind of small. Um, get dog, get. I tell you what, why don't we do this one? You want to do that one? That looks good to me, too. Let's just do, let's do a number seven. Oop, careful, don't fall. Mom really doesn't have you. Here. I thought you were going to hold it and help me sew. No, you don't want to anymore? But mom's putting a leaf on it. Okay. Uh, let's see. I want it to be. Um, kind of tight. So 3.5 and 0 0.8. I cannot see because I cannot get close enough. Hmm. All right, baby. Let mom know. See if I can get the zeroed in here. All right. Okay, so now I don't think that is. Okay, maybe it is. Maybe I'm making it too wide now. What do 
you think? It's good. Okay. And if you think it's good, I think it's good. That's careful. dogs are on me. There you go. Did it skip over here too? No, that's just the way it looks. Words. Please. Okay, sure. No, y'all can't go outside because there's kids out there in the road playing. There you go. We don't want to let Copper out because he's crazy. Good job. Mama will fix the door so you can push it open. No, Copper. No. I get anything done, I swear. No, sir, Copper, no. not happening and y'all don't even start because you don't listen because you haven't been trained and I'm not going to put the other dogs at risk because you don't know how to behave. stuff and he can't go out there we just we live out to where we have a lot of wildlife and our neighbors and things like that are even though we have a pretty good bit of property like our, our neighborhood is very close-knit and we just don't have like dogs running loose it's just not a thing that happens around here it's just not all right so now I'm gonna switch over to a straight stitch really hate this foot because I really want to be able to see but I'm gonna just do it anyways and I'm just gonna I just want to do something I'm gonna do um, oh crud okay go back to straight um, I want to do like a, a closer stitch so I'm gonna do like a 1.6 on this machine
This would have been a beautiful blanket. Just saying. And usually I would free motion this to put all the veins in. So this is kind of a first for me. I wanted to do a really close stitch because I wanted to really dig in there. But this machine sucks. It really does. <sighs> I've really learned a lot through the years of just some things you just don't cheap out on. Don't cheap out on your machine. Don't cheap out on your tools. You're only as good as the things that you use. And that's just facts. Overall, was this necessary? Absolutely not. Um, but I just cannot stand to make something without putting me on it somewhere. I just, what's the point? What's the point of sewing and doing this stuff if it's not fun and if you're not getting some you in it, you know? So let's just have a look, see real fast. I'm, I want you to see it backed out. And so you can kind of see, like, I just think it gives it something. Like it, it's these little details and things. I tell people that all the time. You can make a full blanket like this and it's gonna be impressive. But you put one little leaf on there, just one little leaf, just one and all of a sudden it's a masterpiece do you see what I'm saying like that's why having all of these little kits like this are so important I just think um, the art is in the detail it's not the whole picture it's the details in the picture is what makes it art so I'm going to go around these guys with some kind of stitch and then I'll be back okay so I'm back um I was trying to package up some things. Sorry. Um, okay. So I finished it. I wanted to show you some things really quickly. And we're actually going to make one of these in case you missed it on my group. Um, I do them everywhere, but I try, I'm going to start trying to keep it just on my YouTube. So I just, I can't keep up with all the groups anymore. I just can't do it. Um, so just just bear with me. So what I ended up doing was this little design here and then just went around it with a zigzag and um, this this machine, I'm telling you what, I do not recommend that machine. Um, it missed stitches even through here. Ridiculous. But I just, I'm tired. So um, this is by far my, my favorite with this thicker bonding, binding, what, um, stitching, <laughs> I guess is what I'm going to say. It's definitely my favorite. This is just really pretty work here. And then of course I did this uh, little smaller one and this all came from the same charm pack with the background was just some random cheap yardage. Uh, I just, sorry, low battery, random cheap yardage that I happen to have in my stash. I couldn't tell you anything more about it. So um, turned out really super cute. And like I said, I stuffed this one. So it has that nice 3d look to it. Um, and this is a beautiful fabric by Moda. Okay. So now I'm going to set that aside and let's get to work here. Uh, so what I use to make my hexagons is this is Martelli. This is a three inch. 
and I guess I maybe should have started out with this whole situation first. And this is a two inch. Okay. Now I got this before I got the Martelli hexagons and I've actually never even used this. And, um, I'm actually seeing this now that this is saying it's centimeters. It says CM right here, centimeters. I've never used it, and it's probably a good thing that I didn't because I didn't even realize it was in centimeters. Look at that. So this is two inch from here to here. So for me to get this cut, let's see. I would have to use, if I use their dots to my dots, it doesn't even line up to anywhere. Yeah, it's not going to be a good conversion. I'm going to still use this to cut with because I want to show you um, how and why Martelli made me a better um, sewer person-ish, seamstress, quiltery person. I don't like to call myself a quilter because I, I do almost nothing traditionally quilter. But, you know, so I'm going to show you here. So this is actually already pre-cut. This is Martelli's. Um, this, is, this is a pre-cut. This is one of the backgrounds that has already been cut perfectly. Um, and you could layer these. I think I've done like, I don't know, 12, 15 layers at a time. And I just use my big, um, my big Martelli cutter. I use my 60 and I love these things. You just, your thumb sits inside of here and finger here. And it just, I sometimes I put my pinky up like I'm having tea and it just unlocks and it is super sharp. I actually didn't even know what this blade was made of until the other day when they were talking about it. Uh, it was a random conversation. Now I can't even remember. Some other kind of weird metal. I don't even remember. Anyways, it flings back shut with the flip of a finger or whatever. So, um, this is the 45. And mostly you have to clean it. The blades really just never... Tungsten. That's what it's made of. Tungsten. I think that's what they said. Mostly you just need to keep it clean, which this one really needs to be cleaned. But you really, I mean, I've changed my blade once since May, maybe? Yeah, once since May. And that was only because, um, you know, I felt like I probably should at some point. Um, blade remorse, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, so this is perfect. And so if you're starting out and... You're not so good with your quarter of an inch or or what have you. Okay, so they put these dots in here just like these people did. But these are in centimeters because they're, you know, whatever. So they have dots in theirs where you can put a little pin mark. Martelli has that too. You don't need to be able to see under here. Because you can see that your fabric has went over all edges. Whoa, you ate all of your foods? Good job, baby. So, anyways, you it's a learning curve at first because you think that you need to be able to see it. But this is where you're not spending all your time cutting and you're not hurting all the time from stooping over and doing all this cutting and crap. So, anyways, okay. So, this is the three-inch cut perfectly with the Martelli. The no slip. So, you just cut, turn, cut, turn. And I'm going to cut this in just a minute, okay? But... For the sake of this, go tell Chloe, please. I'm going to try to cut one of these centimeter things here, okay? I have not used a um, slippery thing in a hot minute. So, I don't even know how to use these things anymore. So, let's... I think... Aren't you supposed to, like, align it? Like, don't you? I don't know. All right. So... I think you, don't you just pick like a side and then you just cut it. We're just going to cut. Okay, let's just cut. If I can keep it there, okay. Ooh, it moved. I felt it move. And look, look at that. It tilted toward the bottom and it moved. And I've got a death grip on it. Like, I don't know, baby. You it moved again. Dang. Yeah, I suck at this. I've gotten spoiled. Okay. So I'm going to go forward. I'm going to go real slow. And I'm only doing one layer and it's still slippery. Okay. And then, um, then I think what they do is you take that one corner. Um, I have to check the temperature. And then I think you put it over. Don't you put it in here? Yeah. You put it right there. You're going to have to wait, dude. 
you can ask Google what the temperature is, but it was getting colder a while ago and mom's got to start a fire. And the last thing we need is for you guys to be sick. Sick? Yeah, sick. So I think, don't you put the, would you put the dot right there? You put it where the cut, I guess, where this is, maybe? Hmm. I have no clue. Yeah, I think that's right, because that gets onto that. I have no idea. Okay, guys, I'm just, so I'm going to just push down. I mean, you can see the pressure on my fingernail, okay? There's nothing for me to cut, so that can't be right. So let's go to this next one. Let's go to this one. That can't be right either, though, because that doesn't even look like a hexagon. Whatever. Mom, what, babe? The picture outside. Five and six. God, it moved again. Fifty six. Yeah. All right, you can go outside. Just for a little while, though. My God, it's slipping all over the place. So then, do you put? Do you do it? Do you go? Shoot, I don't even know. I don't know what I'm doing. That's the truth. I do you do it like so then would you put it like on that corner then and follow the dotted lines? So they can definitely go outside then. So how do you get these two edges cut? How do you do that? Okay, this is a failed attempt for me. Because I have no idea what I'm doing. It says to cut through here. I thought you had to shift it over. I guess I have no freaking clue what I'm doing. So would you put it... Would you cut there? And... I don't understand. <laughs> How do you do it? Um. So what... But I thought you, like... In Missouri Quillstar, when she does stuff, she just slides it over to where, like, this point hits something or something. And then you do something and you do something. Okay, forget it. I don't know. I'm just wasting this poor thing. It's not even right anyways. Look. So, if you put this right here, watch this. It's not even going to be right, okay? No matter what the, the difference in the measurement is, the line is not straight. Look up against my board. Like, yeah, it's straight, but it's not the right angle. So, if you were to look at it on the angle, because it slid. What, babe? Yeah, I don't see those kids out there anymore. So, this is the angle of this piece of, of fabric. And then look at the angle on this one. So now you can tell the difference. So the fabric is like this. And my template is like this. It's just totally different. So you can only be as precise as your fabric. So I don't know. I have, did you Look, I've never used this before. I ordered it from Amazon just to be able to see if I could do Hexi any other way. It's in centimeters and I don't know how to do it. Maybe you're smarter than me. <laughs> but it doesn't even matter. But look, you're supposed to do it like, maybe I'm just stupid. I don't know. I thought, I thought you put it down and then you decided what you wanted to have. Huh. And then you like slid it over to that. Maybe that's what, and then. It's not a hexagon. And then you did this, but then that doesn't give you a hexagon. How do you get the other side cut? I'm assuming you do it like that. But then you turn it over and do the same thing. And but I tried. But I tried that and it's not squared. Let me see this. I cut two sides. I'll be back. Yeah, I don't know. Just forget it, Chloe. It's stupid anyways. I'm just sticking with what I know. All right, anyways. Okay, so next, I'm just going to show you here. These are just some random fabrics I have. We're just going to, because that just blew my mind. I can't even function right right now. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut a background. Okay. Make sure my cutter's open. All right. And this is what I'm used to doing. This is what I like to do. And this is how I do it. Okay. And I can just move this fabric anywhere I want to. I don't have to worry about it. This is why I'm a better sewer. Not because of my technique or any class or anything like that. This is why. And I'm not spending a month of Sundays cutting fabric. Oh, in the name of Jesus. That thing frustrated me. Did you figure it out yet? You working on it? You ain't got paper. 
my daughter's going to figure it out for us. She's going to, she's going to work it out. I'm sure one of you guys knows. And so on this fabric, dang it, is my fussy cut put up? Hold on, be right back. Okay, I'm back. She's still, we're, we're over there fighting over that, not fighting, but we're over there fighting with that stupid thing. So this is the fussy cut that comes with the um, Hexi. Most of you already know about this, and I think that's why I left it toward the end, is because you guys that know me know that I've used the crap out of these hexagons. They are like one of my favorite things to work with, and recently the diamonds are my favorites because I've just been going hog wild. Uh, these are the larger ones. This I haven't mailed this out yet. <laughs> I should have. But this is a larger hexi that I've done. It's actually a table runner. It's it's going to a nice lady um, that I made. It's a table runner and it's double sided. One is one side's Christmas and one side's Thanksgiving. Super cool. I'm off I told you it's not right. There's like something wrong about it. I don't get it. Anyways, so um, so this is the fussy cut that comes with each size. So on here you can see it says two. And I ordered some markers to be able to see these better. Hopefully it'll come in soon. And this is two. So this is two inch from here to here. So you could you could measure it if you needed to. So you can see on my Martelli mat here, which I love. I like it being on the purple side because I see better with a dark background. I don't know why, but I do. So the reason why the fussy cut's important is the same reason why it was important in this diamond is because I want to make sure these trees were facing the right direction. And I'm going to do the same on this hexi, even though it's not really important because it's going to be on a hexi that's going to be rotating, but for the purposes of this video. So I want to put a tree right slap dab in the center. So I'm going to, so I'm going to one, two, three, four, five trees right there. Okay. Right. And I've got them right in the right spot that I like them. I want them there. That's how I want it to be. So then I'm going to put this guy down in here. And then I'm going to just take this off and like that. And now that's not going to go anywhere. See, I can do it like that. Like I said, makes me a better person in life. Not really in life, but I'm better at throwing things together. This is why I can do projects just bam, 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 bam. People are like, you're so fast. I'm like, no, I'm not. I just don't have to spend 20 years cutting my fabrics, you know. And I have more ideas because I can look up on my wall and I can put different templates together and see what looks good together. So now we've got this guy. So I'm going to set him over here. Then I'm going to get a scrap piece. This is a really good scrap buster. So here's some scrap. Uh, some little scrap left over from this last little blanket I did. It's got some all kinds of yummy stuff all over it. Fabrics and stuff. And I'm going to take my two inch again. And I'm just going to put him somewhere, any old where. And, okay. And I, I do slide my blade backwards. It, I know that on other blades, I've had Fisker, I've had um, the Olaf or whatever it is. Oh, 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 what, um, you know, you know, I'm challenged, verbally challenged. I've had all of those. And um, again, I have like wrist problems and stuff, so I have arthritis actually in my hands. So I am like, this is the I, first thing I ever bought from Martelli was my cutter. And so after that, it was, you know, game over. All right, so I cut this. So what you could do is I cut an entire five inch uh, charm pack with like three turns, I think. Um, I divided the stack of like 50, um, charm, pa uh, uh, three stacks and I just went zoom, 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 zoom. The whole stack was cut one swoop. And then I used my three inch on my yardage in the background, but you could do it in like a, you could buy the, the 10 inch, um, you could do a layer cake or fat quarters or something like that. Sometimes it's got discoloration back here. It's not, I mean, you can clean it. They sell like little brushes and stuff. This is one of theirs. It's actually really dirty because I used it to clean my my mat, my um, cutting mat. Sometimes I use it on the back of these, which I don't even know if that's what it's for. And I actually was hanging it up earlier on a little hook thing. And look what I did. Sad day here. Sad day. Anyways, so what we're going to do is this one. That's the pretty side. Pretty side down. 
batting. Now, if you need that to be perfect, again, we're gonna use our fussy cut. So we're gonna put this down, okay? And it's gonna give us that perfect center because that two fits inside that three. I don't know if it's like that on every hexagon. I only have the two and the three and the five and a half and six and a half and it works for both of those. So I don't have them all yet, but those are the ones that I do have. Okay, now we're gonna put that guy right there. Then I'm gonna take my tree here and I'm gonna put him on top. I'm gonna take off my fussy, okay. Now, if you're one of those people, I can see it's not exactly right, which is probably user error. I usually eyeball it on here anyways, but I mean, you could use the fussy if you needed to. Okay, so if you need to, if you're one of those people, um, Clover has an ironing, um, uh, thing. I have it. What? What is it? Um, I mean, one of my kids could have ate it by now for all I know. I mean, here it is. Okay. So they, they make things that's ironable. They've, we've got this, uh, Martelli has some little brushes and things like that. This is, this is Clover's. I like it. Um, I use it, uh, you know sometimes. And, but I got to where I was just whipping these out so quickly. And I think you will too, but what you could do is on your ironing board is you could just fold this over right here and, and give it a press and then fold it over again and give it a press. Um, for me, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm just going to be super duper honest with you. I'm going to fold this in half, what feels like half, and I'm not going to worry about it. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to fold this one in half. This does not matter either. You could go all the way around. I just found that I liked it this way better. And then I'm just still folding it in half the whole way. I'm folding this in half the whole way around. Just like this. And you could absolutely press this. Absolutely. You could pin it. You could clip it. You could do whatever your heart's desired with it right here, okay? I am not. That's the way I'm going to leave it. Now let's go to the sewing machine. Okay, I'm back. And let me... Of course, I don't know why I don't adjust things before I start my videos. This is just what you get with me, okay? There's lots of other videos out there that you can watch. And um, I love you guys. And please don't hate on me, okay? I, I try. Mostly, most days, some days. Okay, averagely. Oh my gosh, why am I struggling? Okay, <sighs> let me see if I can get in here. All right, so now, you know, I just finger pressed all of these in half. What are they doing now? Oh, people out on four wheelers, gosh. All right, so. Here's the trick, here's the key, okay? And I didn't, I'm. this is not my method. It's not anybody's method, I don't think. It's It's just something that's out there, okay? I've, I've seen tons of people do it. If you're gonna mis machine stitch these and make them look like high quality stuff here, I am using like a glide, I don't know what color that is. It's like a shiny gray frosty something. It's just what was in my machine. This is not going in a blanket or anything. This is just for the purposes of this video. So I'm going to come over here and I'm starting in the center of one of these walls. That's totally on purpose. So I'm going to just go a couple of stitches. Okay. And then let me get my little purple thing that happens to be a knockoff pink thing. <laughs> And then I'm going to fold this like it would be pressed, okay? Because yours probably is pressed because you're not a slacker like me. I'm sure you're not. And then I'm just going to make sure that this is folded down here. And this is the direction of our pleat from now on. So. So now we're just going to fold and we're going to make sure that our point right here is in line with this one. So we just want to make it look like we delicately pieced each one of these. 
I mean, if you're going to machine do these instead of doing them by hand, you might as well, like, up your A game, right? These kids are killing me today. So, I'm just going to travel along, and I'm doing just, like, way in stitch. And then, as soon as I hit this point where I know that I've hit this, there we go, where I've hit the new one, where I know that this is now down, okay, I just go ahead and turn and pop up, and then I'm going to make sure that my fold is down, that this is over. I'm also going to go ahead and make sure that this is turned, and that's why you want to press it, but I just, after you do about 100 billion of them, you just stop doing that extra step and just, you know. So then I'm going to just turn this down. Also, if you happen to have uh, the Martelli tweezers or, you know, a really good pair of tweezers that can do the trick, this is also a really good time to use them <laughs> because I did have a little bit of a problem of this popping out occasionally. And so what I would do is I just grabbed that corner with these tweezers and I just left it there for a second. And these tweezers are life. I know I've talked about them before, but... You're going to hear me talk about them more because now that they've made their way into my bathroom and beside my bed and my daughter's bathroom and they're part of my life. So, and whenever I make a product part of my life and I like it, it's going to be there. So I'm just going to fold this in half and then I'm going to fold it again. You notice that time I kept it folded in the other side as well and that's perfectly okay. So again, I want to keep this in here good. So I'm just going to use that to keep that beautiful. And this is going to make this so, just doing this extra little corner thing right here is going to be the difference in everything right here. Because if you've got somebody that's one of the quilt police, the first thing they're going to look at is to see how that your, your corners met up. So. And so it makes this little really nice little crease right there. You also will appreciate that straight line crease extra little something when you're putting them together like you saw me doing earlier. And I've done this video about a billion times, so. But it's always been for, you know, my Facebook people and stuff like that, so. That's where I usually do everything at. Is on Facebook. So I'm trying to get over here to YouTube. So I'm going to come down to here and I'm going to stop because this is going to be my last little jog before we have to make our final little tour. Whoops, I went one too far. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but I did. All right, so I'm not even coming down this wall yet. So what we've got here is our last corner. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure this is folded under. Yours would probably be ironed down. And you're going to see what this is going to do here. This is going to want to do its thing. So over here in this corner, we have this pop-up where it goes under. So we want this to be up. Okay. So we're going to take this one. We're going to bring him down. Okay. These tweezers are perfect for this. I'm sorry. I know it's another plug, but I'm really not trying to give you plugs. But look, it just goes right down in that little crease with this little this little ledge that it has. I mean, I guess you could use this, but it's a, it is a little bit bigger and bulkier. Um, this one just gives it that little, because I can really push it down in there and make that, that corner just pristine. So if you're really like into that pristine, pristine work, gosh, you know, it, that's what I'm saying. It makes me a better, um, 
better seamstress, a better sewer. You know, it's not something that's me, it's just the tool. It makes me want to make it more precise because it makes it easier to be more precise. I know, I know, I know it sounds crazy. It sounds like a dang commercial. I sound like a crazy fool. So I just rounded that corner without any difficulties. Now I'm going back over my same stitches and I can't help it. It's in my nature. I have to back tack. And I guess you don't have to if you didn't want to. That's on you. Now I've cut my threads. So this one is not a Martelli cutter. This came, it's like Trillion or something. I don't know. But it's my favorite dang cutters. They are fantabulous. I guess, kid. God. Oh my God. I don't know that I can even do it. I'm going to try, but it doesn't have to be great. All right. So, anyways, there it is. And so you can see I cut off my stars up there, but I, at least I got this tree right. Um, <laughs> you know, um, with my fussy cutting. Uh, but, you know, I didn't take into account the overseeing. But I want you to pay close attention here, okay, because I'm not an expert or, or a finicky sewer. I will throw things together, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. But look, so here's my, my turn in, it's going this way. Turn in, it's going this way. My turn in, it's going this way. Turn in, it's going this way. Look at that corner, oh, yay. That corner, turn in, corner, turn in corner turn in so anybody that's going to look at this is going to be like daggoon look at those look at those corners also i want to tell you right now perfect for ornaments just saying okay so just imagine a little dangly right here hanging up there and you could even put a little keychain on this you could do a little quilt pattern around this some little cute little um extra little um embroidery floss maybe, some hand stitching, and how stinking cute would that be on your Christmas tree? Adorable. Anyways, all right, this video is going to be a thousand million years long. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry I keep kicking my phone. I have to spend time with my kids before it's time to roast marshmallows. So, well, roast marshmallows, roast wieners and eat s'mores. So, happy Halloween and Christmas.